Hello, my name is Shelby Wilcox and I'm a second year PhD student at Michigan State University and I'm excited to present on behalf of my co-authors the limited capacity model of motivated mediated message processing, meta-analytically summarizing two decades of research. In this presentation, I'll be talking about the results of our meta-analysis on the LC4MP, which demonstrates broad support for LC4MP predictions and the cognitive domains and research measurements of the LC4MP. You can find our research plan and our codebook, all of which were pre-registered on OSF, and you can also check out the data there. You can also check out our findings, which were recently published in the Annals of the International Communication Association Journal. The LC4MP is an information processing approach for studying message selection, processing, and effects. It's widely popular in communication with over 1,000 citations and 250 direct tests of the model. And of those 250 direct tests of the model, half of them have been done within the past five years, which suggests that interest in the LC4MP is only increasing. But despite this interest, no formal meta-analysis has ever been done to investigate the claims of the LC4MP hence the current study. We had some basic goals for the meta-analysis here, one of which was to test the model's three primary theoretical research domains, cognitive load, motivation, and memory. The cognitive load research domain is concerned with capacity limitations in the human processing system, like how different message characteristics affect or load the processing system in various ways, and how cognitive load modulates message processing. For example, a cognitive load study might be interested in looking at how different cuts of a message or how presenting a message in different timelines affects the attentional allocation that participants have when they're watching that message. The motivation domain is concerned with understanding how the human motivational systems are involved in communication processes and how activation of these systems, an example, the appetitive or avoidant motivational systems affect encoding, storage, and retrieval of messages. Lastly, the memory domain is interested in focusing on how different message characteristics or content affects how, how, how messages are remembered. And both the cognitive load and motivation domains seem to impact our memory of a message. We're also interested in testing the three primary methodological approaches of self-report, behavior, and psychophysiology. Self-report measures often include self-reporting emotions, where behavior measures may include things like secondary task reaction times and signal detection tasks for memory. Psychophysiology measures often include heart rate, skin, skin conductance, and facial EMG. We had two core hypotheses, one that effect sizes of the theoretical research domains will be significantly different from zero. We weren't necessarily interested in the directionality, but more so the magnitude of these effect sizes. In addition, we also hypothesize that the effect sizes will differ by measurement modality, with the behavioral measures being the largest effect sizes, followed by self-report, and finally, psychophysiological measures having the smallest effect sizes. We also were interested in two exploratory questions. One is that, is the effect size magnitude for each research domain moderated by measurement modality? And is there any evidence of publication bias in the LC4MP literature? The article collection that we used here was previously done for another literature review on the LC4MP, and from that we found 669 articles and then 142 unique articles, and so we included or excluded various articles for that they had to use the approaches for the domains of cognitive load, memory, and motivation, specifically mentioned in Dr. Lang's LC4MP toolbox, and similar to the methods, they had to be the self-reports behavioral measures and psychophysiology measures mentioned in the toolbox. And so you can find that code book and more information on the inclusion exclusion on our OSF. And also then if you look on the right hand side of the screen or the PowerPoint or the PICOS guidelines that we were able to follow by reviewing all of those 669 articles. And once we would find an article then we would put it in for inclusion and we split it up between the co-authors. So two of us, thank you. Russell and Justin, who were knowledgeable on psychophys, coded all of the psychophys measures, and Richard and I then coded all of the other articles for the effect size. And so this is just an overview of all of the effect sizes from those 142 articles. So we found 683 effects in total. Once we had the effect sizes as correlation coefficients, we were able to create a weighted random effects three-level meta-analysis model, 
with that first level being the individual effect sizes, and then the second level being the effect sizes within a study, because sometimes there are multiple, and then the third being those between study effect sizes. Of note, the model is not fully crossed, and that is because the LC4 and P toolbox does not include some types of measurements for some types of research domains. With testing H1 and H2, we are able to look at the main effects of the model and the interaction for that research question, looking at does measurement modality impact or moderate the research domains. Search question two, we were able to conduct an Eggers test, which basically added another parameter to the three-level model in order to look at the variance within all of the effect sizes reported. The results for the hypothesis one, we find that there is robust support support for the LC4 and P research domains, or that all of the research domains effect sizes are significantly different from zero. Specifically, we actually find moderate effect sizes for each of the research domains. And that this shows that LC4 and P is a model that is capable of generating accurate, theoretically derived predictions. And for our, our second hypothesis, that effect size did vary by measurement modality, but not in the specific order that we predicted. So we predicted that behavioral will have the largest effect, but what we actually found is that self-report had the largest effect sizes, followed by behavioral, and like we had thought, psychophysiology did have the smallest effect sizes. And that this suggests that self-reports offer considerable explanatory power and are really useful in detecting various LC4 and P effects. The interaction effect within our model was not statistically significant, indicating that the effect size for research domains in the LC4 and P is not moderated by measurement modality. And just for your interest, you can check out all the results of the domain by modality interaction in this table. The first ever LC4 and P meta-analysis, it was also really important for us to look at, is there a possible publication bias where only large effect sizes are going on? The results of our Eggers test seem to demonstrate that that isn't the case. And an Eggers test looks to see if small sample studies with large effect sizes are published while small sample sizes with small effect sizes are not published. And if small effect sizes from small sample studies are not observed in our meta-analysis data set, this suggests that they likely do exist, but they're not being published because of the results were not significant. These results still hold even when we look at the missing effect sizes. Although I will also say that it was somewhat difficult to obtain some of those unpublished papers, but I think we did a pretty good job of that. While this isn't evidence of publication bias, there does seem to be a strong emphasis on the LC Forum P literature on the memory domain and also the use of self-report measures. Therefore, an interesting possible gap within the LC Forum P literature are focusing on studies within those other domains or also increasing the use of behavioral measures or psychophys measures. To contextualize the results a little bit, by meta-analytically synthesizing 19 years of LC Forum P research across 142 articles, and 683 effect sizes, we find support for the core research domains in addition to the typical approaches of the LC forum P. And not only do we find support, but what we find is that there seems to be a moderate effect across all of the research domains. And that supports the LC forum P assertion that it's important to look at the cognitive and biological underpinnings of message processing. These results also indicate that independent of the, the measurement used, to conceptualize and measure the research domain, that the LC forum P is capable of generating accurate, predictive, and significant or significant effect sizes. Had we not observed that the effect sizes were significantly zero for any of the measurements or the research domains, then that would also lend itself to falsification because we could say that that part of the research domain then isn't accurate Lastly, our meta-analysis results allow us to interrogate the model's post-diction explanatory power. Our meta-analysis here is really just the first step of LC forum P investigation. I think it'd be really important to follow up some of these questions and our findings and looking a little bit more into specific effects. I think the next follow-up step that I hope that now you're thinking about is, okay, what are the specific findings related to maybe manipulating cognitive load and the effects on processing? What are some of those more specific questions that I think would be a really interesting meta-analysis follow-up to our work here? So thank you so much, first of all, to my Atham coworkers for taking your time to mentor me through this project. And thank you, the audience, for tuning into this. I hope that you learned something interesting. 
And now I look forward to your questions. Feel free to contact me. And don't forget, you can check out the OSF and our pre-registration, our open data and all the materials if you're interested in running a meta-analysis. And you can check out the paper in Annals of the International Communication Association. Thank you so much. Have a great NCA.